Hi there! So, I've previously talked about local multiplayer games Super Mario Kart and Snipperclips on this channel, but there's another recent contender to the multiplayer ring, Overcooked. This frantic cooking simulator seemingly popped out of nowhere three years ago, and instantly became a hit, with the original game now being available for PS4, Xbox One, PC, and recently the Nintendo Switch, plus a sequel being released last year, it's clear that the Overcooked series has become somewhat of a staple in the local multiplayer world. But how did that happen? Well, let us find out as we journey through Overcooked's development history. It was the mid-2000s, and developers Phil Duncan and Ollie Devine had just decided to leave their jobs at AAA development studio Frontier Games to start their own indie development studio called Ghost Town Games. But what would the studio's first game be? Well, both Duncan and Devine came from households with lots of siblings, and their families all used to play local multiplayer games together on the TV. However, most modern co-op games weren't really up to snuff, in their opinions. They were mostly first-to-fun games, a term coined by the two to mean games where both players compete against each other to reach the next goal, to do the next task. Duncan and Devine wanted to instead develop a game where it didn't matter how good the players were individually, but instead how well they worked as a team. But how could they go about doing this? Well, Duncan thought back to when he had worked as a dishwasher and waiter in various restaurants when he was younger. In those environments, everyone had to work together to achieve a common goal. There was constant pressure, everyone was shouting and swearing at each other, but at the end of the day, it all just sort of worked. Duncan realised this would be the perfect basis for his and Devine's new game. And so, the two started putting together a basic prototype of their idea. They started by developing a very simple kitchen area, with a counter right across the middle of it. They hoped that this would be enough to stop the players all trying to work independently. Because of the whacking great counter in the middle, it was a natural fit to have each of the chefs work on different sides, passing ingredients between the two of them. And so, only a few months in, Duncan and Devine took their game on the road, to the Norwich Game Festival. According to Duncan, it was a really ropey prototype. However, it was enough to get a general sense of the game, how it would play, and so on. Since this particular festival was free to enter, the kind of people that came to test out the prototype was really varied. One of the first people that approached to try out the demo was a young girl, about seven years old. It was clear to the two that she had never used a game's controller before, and they thought she wouldn't be able to play the game at all. However, she picked up the controls quickly and seemed to really be enjoying the game. Throughout the rest of the day, she ended up bringing more and more of her friends over to try it out as well. Now, this turned out to be a bit of a pivotal moment in the game's development. You see, before then, Duncan and Devine had really only been developing the game with themselves in mind. They thought it would only really be a game adults could fully understand. However, this girl's experience showed the two that their idea could be enjoyed by people of all ages. They kept this in mind throughout the entirety of the game's development. However, after testing the game out at some more conferences, a problem began to emerge. When players started a level, there was a flurry of activity while people's roles in the kitchen were decided. But after that, people stopped talking and just carried out their tasks in silence. I mean, at one festival, a young boy who was playing the game announced, This is boring! right in front of the developers. Ouch. So, Duncan and Devine came up with three solutions to this problem. Firstly, they made sure there were always more tasks than players, retrieving ingredients, preparing them, cooking them, cleaning dishes. This meant players couldn't just stick to a single task, they had to multitask and communicate with each other. Secondly, delays were added. You had to wait for soup to cook, for plates to be sent out. This meant that to avoid wasting time, players would, again, have to multitask. This also added a risk versus reward element to the game. Should you wait for your dish to cook, or try to do something else but risk it catching fire? And thirdly, they added disruptions, which would change up the game partway through the level. Things like rats stealing ingredients, or kitchen counters sliding all over the place on board a ship. When they took this new prototype of the game to conferences, players found it a lot more engaging and entertaining. Now, when coming up with the visuals, the two were careful to keep in mind the fact that the game was, well, a game. With all the frantic action taking place, it was important to keep everything as readable as possible. 
That's why all the ingredients are so large and the animations are so over the top. The look of the characters was mostly just based on Duncan and Devine's personal preferences. One character, however, is not like the others, Cat Chef. You see, rather than having a proper office, Overcooked was being developed in Duncan's front room. Duncan worked under the stairs and Devine worked on the sofa. However, the sofa was also the designated area of Duncan's pet cat, Monty. Monty and Devine often ended up fighting over the sofa. In the end, the two developers ended up giving a Monty a cameo in the game, as a sort of apology for stealing the sofa. Now, what about the game's backstory? Well, one evening, after having visited a ridiculous number of conferences, the two developers were both incredibly sleep deprived. At that moment, Duncan suddenly started spewing out an idea for the story. Okay, so the game's gonna open in the apocalypse, and there's gonna be fireballs coming from the sky. What else? There's a giant monster climbing up the side of the building, and there's an Onion King and his dog. What's the dog called? Kevin. Great, put it in. And so, Overcooked's story had been developed. Right, now it was time to try and get their game on store shelves. It was time to find a publisher. Duncan and Devine showed off their game to a plethora of publishers, but none of them were taken by the idea of a local multiplayer co-op cooking game. However, there was one publisher who seemed sort of interested, Team 17. Unfortunately, the publisher was busy with a lot of other projects, so they too had to say no. However, in the coming months, the prototype which Duncan and Devine sent to Team 17 began being played more and more in the Team 17 offices, until they realised that they had to publish it at that point. And so, on the 2nd of August 2016, Overcooked was released. It turned out to be a hit, with great review scores and sales figures that Duncan and Devine were completely unprepared for. However, it only truly felt real after one event. Ahem. And the BAFTA for British game goes to Overcooked. And with that, Ghost Town Games was established as a developer to be reckoned with. With a sequel being released two years later, adding online multiplayer and dynamic stages, Overcooked has been established as one of the most acclaimed local multiplayer games in recent years. Who knows what's coming next? I don't, but I'd like to. <laughs> oh my god. Wow. Okay. Hi there! Thanks for watching! I hope you found this interesting. So I first heard about this game when we were all learning about the Switch for the first time. I remember thinking how cool and fun it looked, and now I can safely say that it is both of those things. Uh, if you enjoyed learning about this indie co-op game, then maybe you'll like my Snipper Clips video too. It's a little older, but it's still okay, I hope. Right, that's everything. Bye!